Chair, let's now move on to the topic of deflection. Uh, let's try to review how to compute deflections, the deflections of different types of structures loaded by different loads. Okay, so just an introduction to deflection. Uh, uh, we know that structures deform and change shape when subjected to forces resulting to deflection and change in slope. Other common causes of deformations of structures include temperature changes and support settlements. If the, deformation, if the deformations disappear and the structure regains its original shape when the actions causing the deformations are removed, the deformations are termed elastic deformation. So from the basic definition of elastic, mabalik sa original shape. So kung yung deformation, mabalik siya sa original na uh, shape nga, therefore we can call the deformation as elastic deformation. The permanent deformations of structures are referred to as inelastic, kabalik na rin ng elastic, or sometimes we call it uh, plastic deformations. Linear elastic deformations, which are usually small, vary linearly with applied loads, as the term, it's, uh, as the term suggests, linear nga daw, linear elastic deformation. For most structures, excessive deformations are undesirable as they may impair the structure's ability to serve its intended purpose to act like the excessive deflection of beams causing cracks to walls. Structures are usually designed so that their deflections under normal service conditions will not exceed the allowable value specified in building codes. So we have a, a certain amount of deflection allowed by the code that must be uh, complied by every structure for them to be code compliant. Okay. So, so uh, we are talking about deflection since it is a code requirement to limit the deflection of a structure. Okay, so there are different methods or categories of gamba methods uh, for the computation of deflection. The first category is the geometrical uh, or the geometric methods that are based on the geometry of the deflected shape. So there are different methods falling under the geometric methods, which are the direct, the direct or the double integration method or simply the DIM, and then the superposition method, the moment area method, and the conjugate beam method. The second category is the work energy method, which uh, which is based on the principles of work and energy. And yung mga methods under it ay yung virtual work method at yung Castellanos theory. We will try to uh, refresh ourselves with these uh, different types of methods. Starting with the direct or the double integration method. Uh, the direct or the, or the direct integration method essentially involves writing the expression for m over ei bending which is the bending moment divided by the flexural rigidity of the beam in terms of the distance x along the axis of the beam and integrating this expression successively to obtain equations for the slope theta and the flexion y of the elastic curve the constant of integrations are are determined from the boundary conditions the direct integration method proves to be the best or the most convenient for computing slopes and deflections of beams for which m over ei can be expressed as a single continuous function of x over the entire length of load. Actually, we, are, we prefer to use dim whenever yung load natin walang mga discontinuity. Okay, or I mean yung structure natin walang mga discontinuity. However, the application of the method to structures for which the m over ei function is not continuous, because we might discontinuity siya because of change in loading or ei at some parts, uh, it can become uh, quite complicated for, for those cases. If the loading is discontinuous, then several functions must be written for the internal moment, each valid within the region between the discontinuities that satisfy continuity conditions. The difficulty can, however, be circumvented and the analysis can be somewhat simplified by employing the singularity function. So you can see here, maraming ano to, discontinuity yung beam natin. Kapag dinrawing natin yung uh, bending moment diagram niya, marami siyang discontinuity na lalabas kasi nga discontinuous siya dito sa part na to, ng loading niya, tas dito rin, so on and so forth. So, ang pwede natin gawin dyan, una, gawan natin siya ng moment equation on each of this region. Gawa tayo ng moment equation valid for this region, and then valid for this region, and then valid for this region. So, may tatlo tayong moment equation dyan. 1, 2, 3. So, pag nag-integrate tayo dyan, tatlo yung equation na integrate natin. Pwede naman din. That's, pa, that's possible lang. So, magkakaroon lang siya ng mga ranges from uh, from point A to B, from from B to C, tsaka C to B. We can use that, or we can uh, use the singularity uh, singularity functions, wherein we try to, we try to, 
provide a single equation that is uh, valid for the whole span. For the whole span. Hindi lang per, hindi lang per span na ka dito. Or kundi pang, uh, pang whole span. Okay, that is what we call the singularity functions. Okay, so to better understand yung uh, usage of VIM, we can try to solve this uh, problem. So we have here uh, a, uh, somehow a beam that uh, supports truss or purline. So a purline. I think this is a purline that acts as a beam. So ito siya nandito, which is being supported by uh, by uh, members dito sa ends niya. So yung load being transferred from the roof is being carried by the purline, itong member na to. So we are just being asked for the maximum deflection acting on the member. So yung, if ever, if you will try to imagine what will happen to the member if uh, a uniform distributed load is acting on it, it will have an elastic curve or deformed shape similar to this. Okay. So if you will try to to, uh, to draw yung shear and moment diagram niya, the shear and moment diagram will look something like this. This is the shear and this is the moment diagram. I hope you are familiar with the drawing of the shear and moment diagram for this simple. This is such a simple dip lang. Parang simple dip lang with a uniform look. Right? And you can, uh, you can notice yung, uh, the shape of the elastic curve is actually the mirror of the bending moment diagram. That's actually a technique how to imagine how the, the member will bend. Uh, the elastic curve of the member is usually just the mirror of the bending moment diagram. Hindi naman sakto-sakto laging ganun, pero yung shape niya halos ganun. Okay. So from the uh, uh, relationship, y double prime is equal to m over ei, and uh, we can manipulate that equation to, to find the deflection at our particular point. Kunyari dito sa point na to. Yung deflection na yan, let's call that y. At a distance uh, x is equal to 7, for example, from the, from the left end. If you want to find the magnitude of that deflection at a certain distance from the left end, all we need to do is provide the moment equation and then substitute the value of x equal to 7 to the moment equation, I mean to the deflection equation, and that's it. That's, that, that is how you can uh, compute for the deflection using the IF. So that is the goal here. We have to find that uh, 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 deflection equation. Okay. So kung, uh, kung yung angle naman na to, at this point, yung hinahanap natin, uh, represented by theta, we can also use the uh, deflection equation to, to compute for that uh, uh, change in angle, yung theta nga na tinatawag. Okay. So, ito yung theta, uh, and this is dy, and this is dx. Uh, yung slope from analytic geometry is just simply rise over run or dy over dx. Or simply, yung dy over dx is equal to tan theta lang. Okay. So therefore, yung tan theta is actually equal to the slope or simply the slope itself. Okay. So for this particular problem, yung, since we are being tested to, to compute for the maximum deflection, as you can see from the figure, the maximum deflection, of course, at the mid-span. Why max na yan? Okay. So you can see here, uh, when the maximum deflection is uh, achieved, yung, 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 uh, yung angle niya, yung theta niya, is actually a horizontal, horizontal line, line, or yung, ibig sabihin, yung theta niya is equal to zero. Okay. So yun yung gagamitin natin na, ano, ngayon, na, concept for us to know ano yung magnitude ng maximum deflection. Kasi nga, for us to be able to compute deflection, we have to know first yung location niya. Uh, we're in, dito nga, sa given natin na figure, we already assume. Hindi, hindi, hindi actually assume, pero meron na tayong uh, most probable location ng maximum deflection, which is yung sa midspan, at x equal to 5 from the left. So, yun yung kailangan lang natin gawin. Or kunin, yung deflection at the midspan na yun. Okay, so how do we get that uh, mid-span deflection? We just have to produce the moment equation first coming from the relationship na ito. So paano makuha yung moment equation? We can just cut the beam or the purling at a certain point, kunyari na lang dito, at, uh, at, uh, at a distance x from the, from the left end. Ayan. 
na pag kinat natin siya, may lalabas ng mga internal forces, moment, and shear forces. So, yung, yung moment, pagkuha ng moment is just summation moment left or summation moment right. So, in this case, summation moment left. Moment lang lang natin lahat ang nakikita niya sa left side ng cutting plane and then that's it. That's the moment equation. So, ang mga kailangan natin yung moment sa left side is yung 20 kN na force multiplied by the moment arm na x minus kasi downward to. Yung moment itong uh, part na to, which is 4 times x times the moment arm na x over to. That is the moment equation. Right? So, just to verify uh, yung uh, moment equation natin, let's try to substitute x equal to 5, which is the mid span. Pag substitute mo yung 5 dito, the corresponding m will be 50 kN meter, which is correct pag dinigitan mo sa bending moment diagram. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, tama yung nakuha natin na equation. Okay? So, substituting that equation dito, and then integrating, ito yung lalabas. Okay? And then, uh, pag sinimplify natin yung integral ng y double prime will just be y prime. Ito, integral ng nasa, integral ng 1 over ei, pwede natin labas yung 1 over ei. So, yun ito na lang sa loob yung kailangan natin integrate, and then, I-integrate natin yan, simplify, ito yung lalabas. We just have to be cautious kasi palagi yung merong constant of integration. Okay? So, yung makukuha natin na equation na yan is actually the slope equation, yung equation for finding theta. Okay? So, if we will try to integrate that further, integrate that further, the result will be this. So, we have uh, introduced another constant of integration. And the, in, uh, the equation that we have produced is, is what we call the deflection equation. Okay? So, uh, supposedly, we can readily use these two equations unless we, we know the values of the constant of integrations. So, yun yung, goal nat yun yung next goal natin. Malaman yung mga constant of integrations. So, how do we compute for the constant of integrations? We can just use the boundary conditions. So, what are the boundary conditions? We know that at x equal to 0 at this position, yung deflection is equal to 0 as well. So, substituting that sa slope equation, substitute mo yung 0 dito in place of x. Tapos, uh, I mean, dito pala sa deflection equation. Substitute mo yung 0 dito, as well as yung y is equal to 0. You can find for the value of C2, which is equal to 0. Okay? And then we can use the other boundary condition sa right side naman, sa right end. At x equal to 10 dito sa right end, yung deflection niya is also, also equal to 0. Okay? So substitute nyo yan dito, makukuha rin natin yung value na C1, which is negative 500 over 3. So, since nakuha na natin yung values ng cost of, of integrations, we can just simply substitute them dito sa dalawang equation na to, to find the exact slope and deflection equations. So, having these equations, we can now readily compute for what is being uh, asked dun sa problem, which is the, the maximum na deflection. And as, as I explained a while ago, the point with highest y has a tangent line with slope dy over dx equal to 0. And as we have seen, yung point na yun actually acts at the mid span or at x is equal to uh, 5. Pero if we will try to use the equation for the deflection to find that location, or I mean the slope equation to find that location, we can just simply equate y prime to 0 kasi nga yung maximum uh, deflection of course at the point at the x value with a y prime or theta value equal to 0. Okay. So from this equation, we can solve for x and we can just verify that the uh, location of the maximum deflection actually acts at the mid span or x equal to 5 meters. Okay. So we say lang non maximum y will occur at 5 meters from the left end. So if you want to compute for the actual magnitude of the deflection, substitute mo lang siya dito sa deflection equation, yung 5, and then the answer will be this. So in terms of EI pa siya, since wala namang given na EI na values. So, the answer will be this. And take note negative yung sign, indicating that the deflection is actually downward. Okay. And take note nyo rin, kapag uh, naka in terms of EI, yung, yung, uh, yung, uh, yung, uh, yung, yung answer mo, yung units mo will, will, just, will, will not be in terms of length pa lang. Okay. So, nakaganito dapat yung units mo. Kasi nga wala pang EI values. Pag nag-substitute ka ng values ng EI dyan, makakancel yan, matitira yung unit of length, which is meter or mm kung gusto mo siyang express as mm. 